The very concept of mandatory sentencing is offensive to most people who believe that courts should be determining sentences, not, not parliamentarians and lawmakers. Greens MP David Shoebridge says that the new bill is a political farce that won't help the crime rate. This is clearly a political move by Barry O'Farrell. They're under a lot of pressure at the moment, the government, because they want to cut back on police wages and conditions. And this is the police minister uh, effectively throwing a bone to the police association. Criminal experts and law associations have shared similar concerns about the importance of judges using their discretion when sentencing someone convicted of murder. Dean of Law at the University of New South Wales, Professor David Dixon, says that the life sentence should not be taken lightly. What they mean what they say, it means that a person will die in prison. It was expected to be, to be kept only for the, really the, 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 the very, very worst offences. Professor Dixon also says that while it is understandable that police officers would want the people who killed their colleague to be reprimanded, the justification is lacking. This is not about uh, something which has got a, any strong legal or criminal justice justification. It's about politics, which is what I, I hoped that the current administration were going to get away from, which is certainly what they, what they had promised. Mr Shoebridge also says that the underlying principle of the proposal is flawed and that equality should prevail. But it's wrong in principle. There is no way that we should have laws that value one person's life, whether they're a police officer, a nurse, a mother or a daughter, more valuably than another member of our society. All of us, of course, should be equal. Concerns have also been raised about the effect a mandatory sentence could have on the judicial process and on the victim's families. People know that if they plead guilty to an offence, then that guilty plea will be taken into account in their, their sentencing. And if, they, if there's no discretion available to a judge to take anything into account, then there's no reason why they, they, they would plead guilty early, and that means that the trial would be dragged out. And I guess the, the real issues there are about the, the, the I mean, apart from mundane things like the cost, but it's about the, the fact that the, the, the victim's family has to be put through the through the details of a trial and all that sort of thing. The varying degrees of murder and the different circumstances in which they arise must be taken into account, according to Professor Dixon. Otherwise, unjust sentences could arise. It may not be a, uh, a, um, an intentional killing. It may have been something less than that, which still gets counted as murder. It may be someone who is, is an accomplice in some ways, who by the, you know, mur murder is not just committed by the person who pulls the trigger. It's a, it's, it would be other people who might be involved too. So it's, it, that's why it's, it's, always in, it's always better for there to be discretion to a judge to give us an appropriate sentence. As to whether or not mandatory sentencing prevents crime or deters criminals from repeat offending, Mr Shoebridge says that international case studies should be observed. There is absolutely no evidence that supports it. The US has gone down a two decades long experiment with mandatory sentences. Their crime rates have risen steadily over that time. The evidence suggests that mandatory sentences, whether or not someone is going to face 25 years in jail or life in jail, doesn't deter them in those uh, horrific moments where they're making life and death decisions, even criminal decisions.